You're listening to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Alex and Megan of Zesty Ginger. If you're looking to naturally balance hormones and learn how to work with your body instead of against it, you've definitely come to the right place. As a duo of an integrative MD and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and best friends, we use the four phases of the female cycle in combination with functional lab work and mindset practices to transform the lives of the women we work with. We also have a whole lot of fun along the way. If you're new around here, it's best to start with season one before jumping around and plan to roll up your sleeves. Showing up for ourselves and enjoying our lives is what good health is all about. Just a quick reminder though, this information is not intended to diagnose, manage, or treat disease always consult with your doctor before making changes. Hello, hello, Alex here. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Welcome. I hope that you're having a fabulous day or night wherever you may be. We are going to be having a short chat today about the concept of surrender. And it's something that we've talked about before as part of the 28 day flowing with your cycle series. And if you haven't listened to that, that is a whole, um, that's a whole season and there's lots and lots of content of basically what your brain is doing throughout the cycle and then how that impacts our life experience, our emotions, planning life, reacting to life, integrating (laughs) things that we're learning in life, all of that good stuff. However, I wanted to touch on a little bit more about the concept of surrender because it's a really important topic. And at the same time, I've had a lot of feelings around navigating this. And again, it's one of those things that I'm pretty sure I'm not alone in this um, and that a lot of us come up against this. So one of the things that you hear across the board generally like people talking about it in books in courses in memes in accounts is you know on social media all of those things are talking about the same concept of it's important to surrender to you know a higher power or life or the universe or your higher self or however you conceptualize it and in some ways it's absolutely true because a lot of the messaging around that is when we release control and you know basically what is control right it's it's fear of it not working out it's fear of things not going the way we want it's fear about um, things are being done to us right and surrendering is part of a trust process and surrender ends up being a very active process where it, it, this is kind of like self-love. It's one thing to say I'm surrendering or I'm going to love myself, but day to day, thought by thought, emotion by emotion, minute by minute, that's where we actually do it. Right. And surrender, while it sounds like you're not doing much to me, it's actually been a process that because I have to show up at, in a new way, you know, moment by moment, there's quite a bit of learning experience there, especially if you have been someone who's like, I go to school, right? I make good grades happen, or I'm an entrepreneur. I, I'm the one that gets the sales. I'm responsible for my employees and uh, who works with me and contractors, right? So it's very active. And so when people make it sound like, oh, you just surrender, it's about the same as, oh, just love yourself. And most of us have no idea what that really means for us internally, right? And that's the experience. I think that when we are ready for surrender, that process is incredibly eye-opening in terms of like the depth of who we are and how much we can appreciate our role down here, even if we, our belief is that we are co-creating with a higher power or even a higher part of ourselves. I think what happens though, is that it's kind of like food to me. I think people go, oh, well, in order to be healthy, 
I'm going to limit all of this unhealthy food. So they're literally like taking away most of the food options. Oh, I can't have alcohol, I can't have, I can't have sugar, I can't have gluten, I can't have dairy. And that's all good. I've done all of that. I mean, you've heard you've heard it on the podcast, right? We we think all that stuff is really important to address, you know, what foods work for you. But Megan and I have also always harped, and part of this is from our own disordered eating history, is that our number one step is what can I add in that fuels me and feels good, right? How can I focus on what I can eat? And that's why in programs that we've had, like Healthy Hormones, uh, group program. Um, and then, you know, these days what we have is health transformation accelerator program. When we talk about food, it's always, what can you focus on adding that is nourishing? That sounds good to you. That is allowing your brain to see how many options for things that you enjoy and really fuel your body and, and really putting that out first and then beginning to strategically and with compassion and an understanding of where you're coming from, then you can play around with pulling food out, but it's different because you, you still have shown yourself that I'm giving myself food, right? This from a brain survival versus thriving standpoint, it's like, here's food. We have lots of options. I'm not taking things away from you, you know, until we're we're good here. And then how do I need to strategically take things out? Now the standard elimination diet is you pull out everything in seven to 30 days or, you know, a six, uh, six weeks or whatever you hear, and then introducing things back. But again, that presumes that someone has the history and the genetics and the mental capacity for where they are in life to do that kind of thing. And a lot of us, depending on the season that we're in, or maybe just with our history, we'll, we'll never be in the place where we're like, we, we can comfortably pull out everything and it doesn't become about deprivation. It doesn't become this obsessive, like, oh, I can't eat that, but I really want that. And, oh, I fell off the bandwagon. Like I'm, I always do this. I can't even stick to my elimination diet. I mean, I'm really, probably saying a lot of the th stuff that you have thought if you've been in this place, because I remember this, it was, it's very clear because Megan and I did this kind of stuff for years, which is why we have all these alternatives that we teach in our thing, in our stuff, because it doesn't work for everyone, right? You take away a bunch of food from Megan and I, we are going to go straight to the, oh my gosh, but I'm, my brain is going to obsessively think about that. And of course there's things to change about that. However, it's like, why force yourself to go there if that's not a good fit for you at that time? And then knowing that things change all the time. So you can always reapproach that if you want to do it a different way later, you certainly can, right? It, it, but it's just acknowledging where you're at authentically and really saying that I can't do that now. And that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be successful. And I think that that's the message that gets sent. And it, in my mind, it's the same with surrender. I think when we are having things really change in life, whether it's in one category of life or maybe you're in a season where there's lots of shifts and it feels like things are peeling away from you and sometimes it feels out of control, right? And yes, there's lots of self-development things and standing in your power and all of that that comes from it. It's good because it's it's sort of like taking apart the old house so you can build on the same land the house that you really want, right? So it's not to say that life changing or life sort of seeming to crumble before new things come. That can happen. I think in those moments when people are feeling unsafe and like, man, where do I anchor to? Where do I hang my hat on? Where do I find comfort and security when a lot of things are slipping away from me? And people tend to come and say, well, you know, you should surrender. And in the moment, I think that's where the food analogy comes in because when you hear it, that's the way to do it. Of course, you're like, well, yeah, I, I want to, 
I want to handle this. I want to address it. You know, I want to move forward. And what I'm hearing is, despite everything seeming to fall away from me, now I have to just sort of surrender to it and be, add to it. And I, there's some people that are in the moment for what, what is happening are going to be able to do that and feel good about that and, and there's no problem there. And so if that's you, that's awesome. And I think sometimes that advice doesn't match if we're really triggered in our own safety. And like, for example, for me, I've been learning really what it looks like to stand on my own two feet. And that includes sort of even relationship with my higher self, right? And so this concept of surrendering to myself um, was definitely, and surrendering to the higher forces at play, it, at that point it gets a little blurry, right? Depending on how you think about it, because higher power and higher self is, if it's you expressing source, that's what it is. And because of that, it just sometimes takes adding the security and the safety in for yourself before expecting yourself to surrender to that, right? It It's not to say that you're not going to address that or that it's not a healthy thing to move towards and begin to do it, but it's the path that you acknowledge getting there through that determines how how much fear is stirred up and how much we're willing to put ourselves through that do we have the bandwidth to and that's just a decision we get to make despite of any of the other voices that you end up hearing saying oh well you need to do that in order to meet your goals like you need to you know lose everything and then you can rebuild and it's like well okay but that's not probably <laughs> the way that the life works, uh, one path isn't going to work for every single person. And so artificially cramming yourself into a concept of like, this is how it works. This is how you get success. If that's not going to be true for you and you will have the alarm bells going off. I mean, I actually did this to myself for, for months because I kept having people tell me that's what I needed to do. Let go, let go, let go, surrender, surrender, release. I'm like, can't release everything. I'm just not in that place. And when I actually just acknowledged that and said, they're very well intentioned. However, it's just like the elimination diet thing. Yes. If someone went to school <laughs> and, you know, was like, how do you do elimination diets? Or even if I had to tell someone, I probably would explain that general approach. And at the same time, the place where I see myself contributing is to also say, but look at all these other gray areas that you can be in and understand that you are moving in that direction in the way that you need to, in the way that works for you, in the way that supports you. And really at that point for me, I had to start saying, when am I including, what do I get to have? How do I find support and security for myself? How do I bring more of that into my life? And with that, then it's just like with food. When I think about all the things I can eat, the things that I can't eat really begin to fall away as like less in my awareness, right? Because I'm thinking through like, oh, that looks delicious and I can do this and all, all that stuff. And so that the same thing happened where I was like, look at this security, look at what I created for myself. This is cool. And I began to trust the process more because I was showing myself that. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention and just see how that resonated. Cause I would love to, um, it, a lot of people reach out to me after these. So DM us, you know, let me know, screenshot this, um, share your takeaways. I usually reshare those so that everyone is learning from that kind of thing. So I would love to do that here. I would love to hear your thoughts. What does this bring out in you? Does it help you kind of breathe a sigh of relief if this has been going on? I'd love to hear. So sending you lots and lots of love, no matter where you are in your journey. All right. Bye. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare. 
and we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these pod classes helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the series. We appreciate your help so much. Can't wait to see you next time.